I wanted to make a handheld remote control last month and I came up with this uh, big uh, remote uh, but I wanted a handheld control so I didn't want this big old thing this works real good and uh, I mean it's excellent uh, uh, I'm gonna use it eventually but uh, this time I want to make a remote control that is handheld using nothing but this old keyboard so stick around and I'm gonna show you how I did it and hopefully is uh, useful for you if you're trying to find an idea how to control your CNC uh, without having the whole keyboard with you and uh, making it easier for you to locate uh, the different functions on it uh, having only the buttons that you need on it. Very well so the Functions we're gonna try to include on the remote are gonna be the uh, most uh, used uh, functions uh, that you want. But well, of course, it's gonna be first the cycle. The cycle control will include the cycle start, uh, the feed hold, the feed stop, and the reset. Okay, on, on the uh, feed cycle, on the feed control, we want the uh, increase feed or decrease feed first, uh, and then the reset feed, and then the increase increase the feed. So then uh, the zero function which will zero the axis uh, we want to zero the x axis the y axis the z axis and the go to z so those four uh, buttons uh, we want uh, included there and that's zero and of course the jog control will first uh, move the z axis the X and Y axis, and of course, uh, we want to be able to turn it on or off. All right, so those are the basic uh, functions that we want active on the remote, so we can access them quickly, uh, you know, with, with the handheld remote. So, uh, the thing that I wanna do here is, uh, I want to assign a letter that you know it's kind of similar to what the function is so in case of the cycle start uh, for the start I don't want to use the AS but I'll use the C of the cycle start just for this uh, instance right here so it'll be the, the C for the start and the hold I'll use the H and the stop I'll use the S key and the reset I'll use the R key for the feed, uh, I'll use the decrease, I use the D for the decrease. Since I cannot use the reset because I'm already using it, so I'm gonna use the F for the feed. And the increase, I'll use the I for the uh, beginning of the letter increase, right? On the uh, zero, the axis is easy because X will represent the X, Y letter on the Y, and Z letter on the Z. Uh, for the go to C, I'll use the G of the go to C as a key. Now on the jog control, we got, uh, since the uh, Z axis moves up and down, we got the page up key for that to do the uh, Z plus and the page down for the uh, Z minus. So th these two keys will move the uh, C axis up and down. For the on and off uh, on the jog control, I use the J for the uh, for the uh, letter and to turn it on and off. And of course, uh, for the X and Y Z, that's simple because that'll be the uh, up and down, left and right arrows on the keyboard. So we'll use those that one that one that one and this one so 
the, those four buttons will will do that. We'll make the X and Y jar control. I decided to make a couple of changes on the layout on the keyboard. For the feet hold, instead of using the H, I'm going to use the space bar. That way it will be consistent with the regular command that Mac 3 has got, that you can use any keyboard and you can hold the feet just by pressing the space bar. Another change, and since I got uh, space for 20 keys, I'm going to add the tab key, that way I can recall the jogging portion of the program using the tab key. I found this old Dell keyboard. This is a USB type keyboard. So the first thing to do is to take it apart. So I'm going to take all the screws off, about 16 of them. With the screws off now, I can separate the top of the keyboard. This is the part that holds all the keys. Now as you can see, here's the controller. This is the part we're after. It's being held with these three screws. So let me take it off also. Okay, in the back of the controller, there are several pins. One important thing to notice is that the pins are separated in the middle by a space. And in this case, there's a hole between them. So since it doesn't have any markings, I will name it myself so I can identify the pins later. So this side will be the left side and of course, the right side. Now I'm going to arbitrarily name the pins at the center. Number one going towards the sides. One, two, three, four, etc. Same on the right side. One on the middle pin. Two, three, four, and so forth. I have to do this because there are no markings on the PCB. Okay, the bottom part of the keyboard has a silicone membrane that pushes the keys upward and has a little protuberance that pushes the contacts together. The contacts with the traces are screen printed on the vinyl sheets with conductive paint and they are separated by another vinyl divider sandwiched between them to avoid contact between the top and the bottom traces. It has little holes to allow the contacts to come together when the keys are pressed. I am going to use only 20 keys of the 104 keys, so I need to think which keys I will assign to the different functions of the program. So here's a chart with the most important functions for my CNC. I want to take in count the keyboard shortcuts that come with Mac 3 using the same shortcuts on my pendant, only the ones that use a single key to activate. So I can find the traces to the controller pins, now I know which keys to use. I will take the key caps off of the keyboard by popping them out with a screwdriver. Having the keycaps removed, then I can use a pin to mark the connector on the vinyl sheet. So let's position the frame and start marking the contacts.
So it will be more visible if I use a Sharpie paint to circle the contacts, both on the top and bottom vinyl sheets. Marking the corresponding letter on the vinyl will help identify later which pin number will be assigned to it. Just to make sure, I use an extra keyboard. Now I'm going to use my multimeter to find the traces to the controller with the 200 ohm scale because so the traces have some resistance since they are painted. So I'm going to start by tracing the first letter cycle star or C. Since the traces are on the underside, I have to clip the vinyl sheet and locate the letter C. Now using the meter, I will start poking the traces at the controller end until I find some resistance reading. Then I note or mark which pin it goes and write it down on a piece of paper. Now, I use the same key contact location, but on the bottom vinyl, to find the corresponding contact on the controller. Then I do the same for all the keys. Finally, all combinations are identified, allowing me to continue to the next step, which is soldering the wires to the controller. So I'm gonna try to demonstrate here how um, the pins work with the notepad. I'm just gonna try to, uh, to see what the uh, let me see, format the font. Let me select the big font right here so it'll be easier to see. Maybe let's do 48. That would be good. All right, I'll try to demonstrate here how uh, touching these pins and the different uh, combinations will give you the letters, uh, just shorting out the, the pins. I'm gonna start by the S, uh, S uh, pin left three and right five. That's an S. Let me touch it again. Five, five. That's an S. So now let me go to pin X, will be three also. And six, so three and three, six. That's X. And now I go to letter Z as four and six. That's four. Three and three, six, one, two, three. There you go, that's Z. And then, let me go to F. I'll be two and eight, so this is pin two on the left and eight on the right, that's three, six, seven, eight. Okay, seven, eight. Oh yeah, F, 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 F. There you go, I just dump, jump into a different pin right there there you go so that's that's the basic idea 
how you know this uh, little controller works Using the drawing as a guide, then I went to Fusion 360 and I designed the enclosure. So now it's time to do some 3D printing. I modified the design a little bit to make it fit to my small 3D printer. It's not what I had in mind, but I think it'd be okay for this particular project. So after a few hours for each part, I made the top and bottom parts of the enclosure. The good thing is that the parts fit perfectly, as you can see. Now, this is the underside of the key switches, ready to be connected to the controller with tiny wires. This was a very tedious and long process. After all that, then I proceeded to 3D print the keycaps. Meanwhile, I cut some 1 8 of an inch wide acrylic with the shop saw. Then I painted the acrylic according to function and group. And then using the laser engraver to etch the names on all of them.
Using my hardwood press, I press all the name tags to the keycaps and fit each one to the indentation on the keycap. This was also time consuming. This is the finished CNC pendant. Very well, now that we have our remote control or pendant done, the next step is gonna be programming all the functions into Mac 3 or Mac 3 screen using version 1.69 of the editor. So that's what I'm gonna show you next. Very well, so I'm going to program my remote control into the uh, Mac 3 screen so you can use it. So I'm gonna plug it in into the USB port right here on the computer. There it is. You can see that I got open uh, the screen that comes uh, as default on Mac 3. Uh, I think it's the uh, 1024 screen you can see here. So doing that, I'll set this tab right here to the side. And we're going to start programming the keys that are necessary to program since uh, I use a controller from a keyboard. Some of the functions are already included in Mac 3, like uh, the fit, fit hold, which uh, uses the space bar, is already there. The tab, and the, uh, we don't have to program the enter. And the arrow keys are already uh, kind of programmed into the uh, Mac 3 program so it's not necessary for us to to do that so the ones we're going to program are the function the main functions uh, like uh, the cycle start so let's start with that one so if I click on the cycle start function right here uh, I'm going to click on the Im image button and it'll bring up here on the tab uh, the different functions that uh, are available to change right here on this uh, uh, button. And here where it says the hotkey, there's nothing in there. Usually if there's something like that OEM code, well, you can get rid of it. You just double click on the hotkey and we'll go into the uh, cycle start here button on the uh, control. And press on it and of course if you remember a program a C to be on that on that button right so it brought up a C so now we'll go to uh, the feed hold we don't need to worry about that one because it's already done the space bar uh, but the stop we have to do it so image button right here and there's no hotkey program at this moment. I'll probably modify this a little bit. It should have been something in there, but I probably erased it or something. Anyway, so there's a stop. Uh, of course, it brings up an S. If you remember, that's the letter I program into it. Now to do the reset, I uh, have to come back to page zero. And if I select it, I'm gonna select the image button and there's no hotkey on that. So we'll double click and we'll press the key reset and of course it's the key the the R key on it. If you had to delete a key, you would select it and hit this delete hotkey and it erases it, right? But in this case, let's do it again. So here you go, that's the R key. Now we'll come back to page one. And now we're going to program uh, the zeros 
to zero the axis and we'll click on it and open the image button hotkey and we'll go to zero x that's the first one right here that's an x of course then we'll go back and do image button on zero y same thing we'll come here and press on zero y and that's a y of course and we'll finally come here to zero the z axis so I'll press on the image button and we'll go to hide key and go zero axis right here and now one more that we have to do is go to zero so we'll get that one image button and come here go to zero there's a g now there's one more that we have to do which is the jack on and jack off so the button right here is no hot key present so we'll press on that one is the J so I think we have them all uh, we don't have to worry about the arrows because they're already in the program uh, we got it so now we come here and save it and I save it as a 1024 set but if you want to save it as something else, you come here and save it as um, whatever name you want to do. In this case, I'm going to use it as a pendant, CMD pendant, and save it. And it's there. <clears throat> now, let me minimize this program, and then I'm going to open uh, Mac 3. And the Mac 3 we have to come here to the window view load screens and we'll go to CM dependent and open it and when it takes it it's gonna flash the screen takes a little while there you go and it should be ready to to work so let's test it I guess so I haven't programmed anything else on it, so the arrows should work. There you go. As Y plus, Y min minus, X plus, X minus, and Z plus, Z minus. Go to Z. Oh, that's zero Z. Go to, that's zero Z, zero Y, and zero X. So let's do this again. So it'll do the zero, go to zero. There you go. Let's go to zero. Now we press on the jack button. You can see that it turns on or off the, the, the LED. So if you turn it off, then there's no movement on here because it's off. So turn it on and then you can jack again. So now the cycle start right there. You can see it flashes and the reset then it flashes also now if I want to st stop the feed but there's nothing to feed there I need to load some G code which I don't think I have uh, but let's see G code I don't have any samples here uh, bitmap brains I don't have a sample of a G code uh, maybe if I come here, let me see. Do I have anything here? See, I'm using <clears throat> VirtualBox to run this. I don't have anything. So my documents, maybe I have something here. Nope. Okay. Well, I'll demonstrate that on on the. Uh, on the machine when I make this run so I just wanted to show you how to program the different keys here so if I oh my goodness okay finally okay here's a here's a uh, okay all right so I need to load a chico here to desktop SP folders, and there you go. That's 
There you go. I, I got a jig code loaded into it. So if I want to start the cycle, it starts it. You can see. And if I want to hold it, it will hold it. It will hold it. And start it again. Now we'll stop it. And if I start the cycle again, I can go uh, override the feed. I didn't program the uh, the feed override, so okay. So stop this, reset, stop. I forgot to program my uh, feed override, so let's do that. Oh. Okay, so let's program those buttons. We're gonna program the feed rate override decrease will be the hot key slow is a D as decrease and we go to the increase and the hot key is gonna be fast the I as increase and finally to the reset reset the feed rate will be the hot key feed reset is the F so that should do it now I'm going to save this and minimize it now I come here to program again and we're gonna have to come here to view and refresh the screen see I'm dependent and I think you know did I double click on it I think I did so there you go that's refresh so now if I run the, the cycle start and I increase the feed okay if it goes up and then if I go down and finally reset the feed and the override um, LED uh, stops uh, blinking so increase decrease and override <clears throat> all right and then we'll stop the feed and this is the reset Another thing that I wanted to include is the tab key, and the reason is to bring out uh, the MPG uh, mode, which is uh, a manual pulse uh, generator. And uh, just to click on it, although you have to use uh, the mouse, I guess, I needed an extra couple of keys to do the jog mode here uh, as a step or continuous jack mode so I imagine I could add another key if I would uh, make another pendant you know for that but uh, that basically what I wanted is just to add the, the tab key for that reason so um, uh, the, the enter key is uh, if I select to open a file like uh, I want to close the G code and I want to load G code and then you select uh, <clears throat> something then that you enter usually when uh, you're opening a program or something is when you use that so that's about it uh, I think this will do it so let's close the program uh, close the G code first close the program and go to the next step let's close this too right very well so I'm here in the shop with my laser engraver and I'm gonna use this machine for the demonstration of the pendant or remote control so let me plug it in first there you go Light should come on. Yeah, they're on. So when you have a touch screen and then I'll select the, uh, 
the program is very handy to have an enter command there so I can double press on the enter and it will bring up the screen now the reset button won't work because I have to turn the controller on so now it should work there you go the motors are on uh, now this screen set uh, is for the control panel that I built several months ago so with the joystick you can move it around you've probably seen this so I'm going to have to <clears throat> use the matrix screen that I got on this computer to enter the uh, different key um, letters into the uh, my, my screen because I'm using uh, the virtual box just for the video but uh, when, if you try to transfer files from virtual box to regular windows and then transfer it here uh, for some reason it's just not uh, doing it right so uh, we're going to do this uh, programming here and we're going to open right here the matrix screen and uh, the default screen is the 1024 screen so this is the one we're going to modify and then we'll save it as uh, uh, the CMD pendant file right so okay so let's start doing the programming on it again, it'll be real quick. Image button, and then I'll shoot load. All right, and uh, let me just try this. Okay, we had to program the keys on, on the program itself. So let's come here to hotkeys, and we're gonna do the left arrow is, no, the right arrow is uh, Y plus. I mean X plus and X minus is the left arrow and then Y plus the up arrow Y minus the, minus the down arrow Z plus the up arrow and Z minus the down arrow there it should be good so now if I do the override reset override reset Go to zero. Uh, we do the zero x, zero y, zero x, zero y, zero z. There you go. And uh, let's load some cheat codes here. Uh, load cheat code. Let's do that one. Okay, so cycle start there you go hold it cycle start tap it cycle start reset cycle start So hold it. All right. Now jack all off. It doesn't jog. There you go. Jack all. And if I want to open up the, the uh, MPG mode <coughs> tab, there you go. And that's it. So it works as intended. So I um, hope you like it. I think this is going to be all for this uh, video. And I appreciate you watching. And thank you very much again. And if you like this sort of content, please. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you like this uh, you find this video interesting and I will see you in my next video bye bye